In this video, we are going to focus on two-way tables. When the results of an experiment involve overlapping categories, it can be very helpful to organise the information into a two-way table. Consider the following example in which a coin is flipped and a die is rolled. So we have a two-way table down here, two ways meaning one way this way, the second way this way, there's two ways and two items up for consideration. So the first thing is we look at the order it's written in. It says a coin is flipped. So the coin goes first and the die is rolled second. We have uh, heads and tails being the two options for the outcomes for the coin. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six options for the outcome of the die. Because we flipped the coin first, the coin must be written first in these answers in the table. So you can see here, heads and tails is written first. And the die is rolled second, which is why the numbers come second in this order. So for this section here, for heads, if you roll a heads, then get a one, there's an outcome. A heads and a two. A heads and a three. A heads and a four. Heads and a five. Heads and a six. And the same thing goes for tails. If you roll a tails, you can get a tails and a one, tails and a two, tails and a three, tails and a four, tails and a five, and tails and a six. So we have 12 possible outcomes when you flip a coin and roll a die. Because there are 12 outcomes listed in the table, the probability of getting a tail combined with a number five, say for example here, a tail and a five, is one over 12. So whatever questions you get for probability, you need to seek out how many of those fit into that category and it will be over a fraction of 12 because there are 12 outcomes. So let's now take a look at this question. It says a coin is flipped and a spinner is spun with numbers one to five. Number one, complete the two way table below. I've already begun to do that. I have put the coin first and the spinner second as indicated by the question. I'm now going to take a look at what's on the coin. Well, the coin has a heads or a tail, so that gets filled in first. Oops. And I look at the spinner, the spinner has numbers one to five, so I fill that in two. Once I've done that, I can then go ahead and write the uh, combinations, the outcomes. So, the coin goes first, so the easiest way to do it is actually write down all of your heads and then tails. and then come down with the numbers. This makes it easier and less chance for error. So now I have all of my outcomes. And the first question says, how many outcomes are possible? If you count all of these outcomes I've written here in purple, two, four, six, eight, ten. There are ten outcomes. So when we answer questions around this for probability, most commonly, you're going to find that the number 10 goes as the denominator in the fraction. That does change when you are doing a slightly different two-way table and the questions are the given word and that's coming up. The next one, question three here, says list the four outcomes in which an even number is displayed on the spinner. So we're looking for even numbers here. So we've got H2, H4, T2 and T4 and we simply just write those down. So H2 comma, H4 comma, T2 comma, T4 comma, full stop. Question four says state the probability that an even number is displayed. I'm going to write the answer up here, okay? So we're looking for an even number to be displayed. So we have to write P for probability and bracket. And in this bracket is the event, so even number. Bracket equals, actually that's getting a little close to that. We'll just write that smaller there. So probability of even number equals fraction line. 
Well, I know that there are one, two, three, four, five, that's 10 outcomes and an even number. Well, I know that from this question here, I had one, two, three, four. There are four even numbers out of the 10. And then I have to simplify that fraction by finding the highest common factor, HCF being two. Two goes into four two times and two goes into 10 five times. So always simplify your fractions. The next one says list the outcomes for which tails is flipped and an odd number is on the spinner. So we've got to have a tail and an odd. So if we go through the tail section, T1, T3 and T5 are odd and tails. So T1, comma, T3, comma, T5, comma, full stop. And the last question here says, what is the probability of getting a tails and an odd number? So we already know that there's a tails and odd number outcomes there. So we have to write P bracket tails and odd number. Close the bracket, put the equal sign down. We know there's 10 complete outcomes in this table here. I know that there's three of those combinations because we did this question first, which helps us for this one here. And the answer is three over 10 and we cannot simplify it because it cannot be broken down with the highest common factor. We're now going to progress. This two-way table helps to organize outcomes into different categories. This example shows the type of computers owned by 100 people. So I've drawn the two-way table here. It's just slightly different. We haven't got the top row or the side column here. We don't need it because this information is a little bit different and it reads slightly different, but the principles are very much the same. So before we progress and look at this information on the side here, we'll take a look at this table and read it. So first of all, you need to know that the totals, if you add this number 43 and this number 57, you will get 100. The same thing goes on this side. If you add 62 and 38, you will get 100. It mentioned that 100 people are in this survey or this um, two-way table and 100, the total of the people will always be in this bottom right-hand corner. So again, if you add these numbers here, and these numbers here, they will equal 100. Now, if we look at the MAC and no MAC, people in this column are 43. This is the total number of people that um, have a MAC. So MAC people are 12, 31, and it equals 43. So 43 people have a MAC. 50 and seven makes 57. These people do not have a MAC. So these totals are on the bottom here. The same thing goes across this way for PC. There are 62 people that have a PC. So 12 plus 50 equals 62. And there are 38 people that don't have a PC. So 31 plus seven equals 38. So in calculating your totals, and this section here and this section here are the totals, anything in this column tallies up to a total of 43. Anything in this column tallies up to a total of 57. And again, we know that this equals 100. If we go the other way, it works that way too. In this row, this all equals and tallies up to a total of 62. And the same thing here, this totals up to 38. So if you run along and get to the very last uh, box, okay, these are all totals from in here, and of course, this 100 gets its totals from the outer ones. To progress further, I can read this table, and it says that the PC and Mac, there are 12 people that own a PC and a Mac. There are 31 people that have a Mac but no PC. Over here, we have people, uh, there's 50 people that don't have a Mac but have a PC. 
And over here we have seven people with no Mac and no PC. They have absolutely nothing. So you find that these people have both, these people have nothing. Alright, so if we look at this information on the right hand side here, it says 12 people own both a Mac and a PC, which we have already established. 62 people own a PC, so we find the number 62. So people that own a PC are 62 in total. 57 people do not own a Mac, so no Mac is 57. And we've got some probability uh, questions here or examples. It says the probability of having a Mac equals, now because there's 100 people in this survey, there is 100 outcomes, and therefore 100 will sit on the bottom of the fraction line as the denominator for the probability questions. So we find there's 43 people that have a Mac out of 100. Probability of only a Mac, so they don't have any other computer, so no PC. Again, 100 is the total, it sits on the bottom. And only Mac, there's 31 people, because in this column here it says they own a Mac. In this row, they do not own a PC. So 31 out of the 100, 31 over 100. Probability of Mac or PC. Now, this situation here is a little bit different, a Mac or a PC. It says 93 over 100. In order to calculate the 93 over 100, you're going to have to add a couple of numbers. So, a Mac or a PC. So, anything, um, any category here that shows that they own a Mac or a PC, no matter if they've got both or one, we have to add up to get to 93. So we have 12 people here that have a Mac and a PC. 50 people here that have a PC and no Mac. And 31 people that have a Mac and no PC. So these people all have either a Mac or PC or one or the other. So if we add 12 and 31 and 50 together, we will get 93 over 100. This number here, 7, means they've got no Mac and no PC. They have absolutely nothing. So you could actually say 100 people take away 7 equals 93. And the last one here, probability of a Mac and a PC, it means they own both. Well, we know that the Mac and PC category here, this uh, outcome here, I should say, is 12. So there are 12 people that have a Mac and a PC. 12 over 100, because there's 100 people in total, and we can simplify down to 2 over 25. Okay, let's advance this further and look at this question. At a car yard, 24 cars are tested for fuel economy. 18 of the cars run on petrol, 8 cars run on gas, and three cars run on both petrol and gas. For question one, it says illustrate this situation using a two-way table. Well, first of all, look at the numbers in the question. It says here there are 24 cars that are being tested. 24 is my total because that's the total number of cars involved in this scenario. It says here 18 of the cars run on petrol. So I find petrol, go all the way to the end to the total section, and I write in 18. It also says here that eight cars run on gas. So I find gas, and the total number of cars that run on gas is eight. And the last piece of information here is three cars run on both petrol and gas. So if I go to the gas and petrol section here, I have to write three. Now I can fill in the missing blanks with this information. So in order to fill in this total here, I think about what do I have to do to 18 to get to 24. I have to add on six. So now 18 plus six equals 24. And I do the same across here. What do I have to do to 8 to get to 24? I have to add on 16. 
So now I've filled in these blanks here. The same thing happens here. I run across here and think, what do I have to do to 3 to get to 18? I have to add on 15. I can now work down the page. What do I have to do to 3 to get to 8? I have to add on 5. And what do I have to do to 15 to get to 16? I have to add on 1. So you can fill in the missing blanks by using the totals here. The next question says, how many of the cars do not run on gas? Okay, so we're looking at the do not run on gas. So cars with no gas equals 16. And run on neither petrol nor gas so no gas and no petrol is one. Over here now on the right, find the probability that a randomly selected car, A, runs on gas. So we have to go P bracket and it's saying runs on gas. So we put that in here. This is the event we're looking at. Bracket equals and a fraction line. Well, the total number of cars involved in this is 24, so that becomes our denominator. And we're looking for running on gas. So if I go to the gas section and I go all the way down to the bottom, the total number is 8. I have to simplify that. I would normally write it underneath, but I'm just going to write it to the side because I'm running out of room. The highest common factor is 8. It goes into itself once and 24 three times. The next one here says runs on only gas. P bracket, and I'm going to put that in there, runs on only gas. Bracket equals fraction line. We know there are 24 cars involved in this, so 24 is the denominator. And we're looking for runs on only gas. So we go to the gas section here. Gas, no petrol means they are the only cars that run just on the gas. So it is five and we cannot simplify this fraction so it stays that way. And the last one here runs on gas or petrol. So probability runs on gas or petrol. Bracket equals fraction line. We know that there are 24 cars in total being considered here in this scenario, so 24 goes on the bottom. Now, they can run on gas or petrol. All I need to do is go to the column and the row and look for the no gas, no petrol. That means these cars do not have either of those. So I can go total of 24 minus this one and get 23 over 24. Or alternatively, you can add up 15 plus 3 plus 5 to get you 23, because that is every other car there that is involved with either having uh, a gas or petrol.